Just in time for Halloween, the latest West Side High School theatrical production is a rendition of the classic gothic horror story, Faust, by Johann Wolfgang von Goethe. Well, actually, if the program is anything to be believed, I am the Nils. It's equal parts Goethe, equal parts Marlowe, and all parts fun. However, in this version of the tale, developed by the actors and producers themselves, Faustus is a circus manager rather than a doctor. And as such, he longs to produce the greatest show on earth. But in the mangled words of Warren Zevon, what's a Canadian farm boy, uh, I mean a uh, German circus mogul to do? Anyway. Enter Mephistopheles, the king of hell. He offers Faustus 25 years of fame and fortune for the low, low price of... <laughs> In preparation for the viewing of this masterpiece, I did some research. And by research, I mean I watched F.W. Murnau's adaptation of the tale. The story is the same, the messages are the same, but the rest of it is all theirs. Faustus signs off his soul like an idiot. And, spoiler alert, he gets it in the end. The story is tried and true, nothing we haven't heard before, and although this is by no means a bad thing, what really makes this production is the acting. I admit, it was a little unusual to me at first when I saw a gender-flipped Faustus, but I quickly got over it. Very quickly, actually. Pretty much instantaneously. But there's one thing that I learned when working with this troupe, it is that there is no one face of the play. No one actor is the star. There is no top billing. There is no favoritism. I hate to say it, but that's not the case with this play. I must confess, the real star of the show, in my opinion, was the villain. That's right, the devil. The king of hell himself is the best character in the play. And I'll tell you why. You remember all those Saturday morning cartoons where the devil was portrayed as a man in a red suit or cloak brandishing a pitchfork? On top of that, he would either be A, a complete sissy, B, sound like he's having a yelling contest with Mount Everest all the time, C, laugh like Mozart, D, speak with a creepy monotone voice, or E, all of the above. And I would give great kudos to the actor who could successfully pull off option E and be taken seriously, Whoever that actor may be. Well, that is the case with the devil in this interpretation. The actress who plays Mephistopheles does such an over-the-top and hammy performance, it's a wonder the scenery is still in one piece after she's done chewing on it. What if it still tastes the same? One last thing. You know how sometimes the only thing you can remember about a movie, novel, television series, or theatrical production is the climax and or twist? Seriously, the climaxes of these kind of movies are probably more memorable and important than the movies themselves. Me, I was exactly the same way when I was a kid. Except I was always waiting for the credits. Now everyone knows that in theater they have their own little credit sequence. It's called the postlude. And this was a great one. Of course I mentioned before that Faustus gets his comeuppance in the end. Because let's face it, you can't deceive the great deceiver. But the way he gets it is memorable to me because of the music. In a nutshell, I was in a play with this troupe that revolved around light motifs. My light motif was recycled for the climax of this play. And plus, haven't you heard that music hath charms to soothe the savage beast? And this one is very soothing indeed. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and cool, step right up. Behind this curtain lies a ghastly concoction of delight, horror, fantasy, and terror. Your every wish is our command. Your every whimsical desire brought to life. But I'm warning you, there's always a price. Welcome to the greatest show on earth.